Hello viewers, the most important thing about a microwave antenna is it is a passive device. There are two types of antennas are there, one is parabolic antenna and the second one is horn antenna. In mobile communication world, predominantly or I can say almost always parabolic antennas are used everywhere. Horn antenna is used mostly in satellite communications. Okay, what we are going to see in this tutorial, so we are going to study what type of uh, relationship is there between the microwave frequency and the antenna and what frequency to choose and what is the size of the antenna we have to select and what polarization we have to select vertical or horizontal for the given light. Before moving on to the next slides, we will see how a microwave antenna works. The modem, of course, it sends the baseband signals to the microwave antenna, which is an electrical current. It passes through the microwave antenna it induces a magnetic field and the magnetic field oscillates with the given frequency. And then of course, the current keep on changing depends upon the messages. So whenever the current changes, the given frequency also changes. The given frequency changes uh, and when the given frequency changes, the magnetic field also changes. So it's uh, 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 this is how the electromagnetic waves are radiated in the atmosphere. This is what happening in the transmitting side. So let's see what is happening on the receiving side. In the receiving antenna, electromagnetic waves are passing through the antenna and this is a magnetic field. This magnetic field induces a current electric field and that current is given to the modem and the modem will decode the baseband signals. This is what happening in the microwave antennas. Let's start the discussion. Okay, so what are all the things we are going to learn about microwave antenna today? The type of antennas, one is parabolic and horn antenna, antenna gain and the beam width and then polarization of the antenna, antenna towers, yes, there is a lot of dependency on, on there between uh, towers and the microwave antenna and finally we are going to see about antenna noise. Okay, in the screen, you are seeing a microwave antenna. When you break the microwave antenna, you can see three components. One is the parabolic surface and the transmitter and a waveguide. So the waveguide is this position so that the entire energy from the transmitter is focused on the parabolic surfaces and get reflected and passed through the atmosphere. So <clears throat> if you look at the parabolic surface of this antenna, parabolic antenna, it is not 100% efficiency. It doesn't have 100% efficiency, unlike the isotrophic antenna, which is having a 100% efficiency. Why this doesn't have an 100% efficiency? Because there are a lot of spillovers. So from this waveguide, there is a spillover. This is, uh, this is called a spillover. And the parabolic surface is not a perfect parabolic shape, in perfect parabolic shape. So, and the third one is, the uh, feed on feed on itself is blocking some of the transmitting power and also the receiving power because of these three factors the efficiency of the antenna is not 100 percent and it lies between 50 to 70 percentage let's see the radiation pattern of the microwave antenna of course there will be a main beam this a half power beam with this is called maximum energy is focused on this area only this area is also called as bore site there are minor lobes back lobes and side lobes are there okay the main lobe travels in horizontal direction but the minor lobes and side lobes back lobes travels in the vertical direction okay before seeing the gain of the antenna we have to see one parameter of the antenna that is front to back ratio yes uh, what is the ratio between the forward energy for um, forward energy divided by the backward energy okay so always uh, the f uh, front to back ratio of any parabolic antenna should be very high because the most of the energy should be there in the forward direction the very minimum energy should be there in the backward direction if it is not there if the front to back ratio is very low then what will happen the first thing these side lobes or the minor lobes are exposed to sun so it will create a noise and the second thing what will happen okay 
from the opposite antenna, the microwave waves are getting reflected and it reaches the side lobes. If the power of the side lobe is quite high, then it will create an interference. Okay. Normally, there is a power difference between the main lobe and the side lobes. Uh, so, it may be in the range of 35 to 40 dB. Okay. So, let us see the gain of the antenna. So, what is the gain of the antenna? As I told earlier, it is not a um, amplifying device, it is a passive device. So, what is gain? Here, gain means it is the ability of the microwave antenna to focus the beam in a narrow direction. So, we want a very narrow beam. So, that is the ultimate aim of the antenna. So, it depends upon two things, uh, 20 log 8.1 into D into F. D is the diameter of the antenna, F is the frequency of the microwave link. Okay, so whenever the diameter antenna of the antenna or the frequency of the link is increasing, the gain of the antenna is also increasing. Then what will happen? You will get a very narrow uh, uh, beam. Okay, if it reduces the diameter and frequency of the link is reduces, the gain of the antenna will reduces. Then what will happen? And then we will get a wider beam width. Narrow beam width can travel a longer distance, it will avoid interference and the wider beam width will create interference and it will not go for a longer distances. Okay. Of course, there are a lot of trade-offs between using a high gain antenna and the low gain ant antenna. For urban area, we can use the smaller antenna so that it will not create an interference. Uh, the overreach will not be there. The microwave energy will not travel for a longer distance and will create an interference with the other links. This will not happen. And also for a longer urban areas, we can go for a, a higher high gain antenna. So we can use a, a bigger antenna size and then we will uh, travel for a longer distances. Okay. So, in some cases, uh, you can play around. For example, there is a tower and the house owner of the tower is not allowing to load a bigger size antenna. So, in that case, we do not want to com compromise on the gain of the antenna. So, uh, the value of D is reducing. At the same time, you can increase the frequency and then you can increase the gain of the antenna. This is how you can play with uh, D and F and adjust the gain of the antenna. Okay, now you know what is the relationship between the frequency and the antenna. If frequency increases, the gain of the antenna is also increases. Okay. Okay, so high gain antenna. Why we often um, um, talking about the narrow beam, narrow beam? Because we want a pencil, a pencil beam kind of beam. I, for example, I will open up a link. Okay, so normally the microwave energy is traveling like this. Okay, so this is an antenna and microwave beam is traveling like this. Okay, if you break here, it is for example, it is traveling for uh, I can say 4 kilometers. If you break the parabolic here, then you will see a circle here. The diameter of the circle is 1.4 kilometers. So, this, the, the microwave energy spreads like anything. So, our receiving antenna occupies a very small portion. So, we have to position this antenna within the 3 dB, uh, 3 dB margin. Okay, this is the 3 dB margin. If you position the antenna within this 3 dB margin, then you will get the maximum power and you can um, sufficiently decode the baseband signals. Okay, it is back to the PPT. So, this is what mentioned here. So, this is the board side and then okay. if it is a lower beam with antenna, the diameter of the wave is, uh, the circle is 1.5 kilometer. If if you increase the, uh, uh, if you if you are using a low gain antenna, then the diameter of the circle went up to four kilometer. You will receive a very less power. Using that very less power, we can't able to decode the baseband signal because uh, there is a term called a receiver sensitivity. So you need uh, at least some minimum power for the receiver so that it can able to uh, decode the baseband signals. This is called this is called as the minimum power is called as the receiver sensitivity.
okay then comes the beam width okay there is a direct relationship between the beam width and the antenna gain so beam width also it depends upon frequency of the microwave link and the diameter of the antenna now it is inversely proportional so whenever the frequency and the uh, diameter of the link is increases the beam width will be decreases so we want such kind of beam only we will get a beam like this okay so whenever the frequency or uh, or the diameter of the link is decreases the beam width will be increases so we will get a uh, i'm sorry we will get a low gain antenna so you will get a very big bore site here <clears throat> okay then we will move on to polarization in the beginning of the video we we told that the electric field plays a crucial role because the electric field is passing through the antenna so it determines the orientation of the link whether it will goes in a vertical polarization or horizontal polarization okay the position of electrical waves is determine the polarization of the microwave link okay so this is the feed on this is inserted in the back of the antenna if the feed on is perpendicular to the earth surface see this is perpendicular to the earth surface then the electric field will be horizontal in the feed horn then the link is called as horizontally polarized link if it is horizontal to the surface of the earth then the electric field will be in the vertical direction then it is called as vertically polarized one so after the feed on if it is in vertical direction so it will produce a vertical waves if it is horizontal direction it will produce a horizontal waves so which one to choose if you want to go for a longer distances always prefer for vertical polarization and in common uh, in urban area we we choose the horizontal frequency and for rural area and longer hops we prefer vertical energy uh, vertical polarization uh, because horizontal polarization is immune to raindrops and heavy rains so the rain fading is quite high in horizontal polarization that's why we use horizontal polarization mostly in the urban area okay and then uh, there is a advantage of polarization also earlier uh, days we use single polarized antenna for example we use only one frequency and use one polarization nowadays the time has changed and we are using started using dual polarized antenna so in the same frequency we send two channels one is in vertical polarization and another one is in horizontal polarization uh, i have explained this concept in an another video i have provided the link in the description also okay let's move on to antenna noise antenna noise is uh, is it's depend upon the noise temperature only so noise the formula for a noise figure is actually it is 75 into k for 1 db and for 3 db it is 290 k okay the k is the noise noise temperature okay the, the noise temperature depends upon all these noises uh, waveguide noise sky noise atmospheric gases like oxygen oxygen molecules and made man made noises and radiation from earth all these things creates an um, uh, our changes that uh, noise temperature and which ultimately results in changing in the noise figure also and then we move on to tower height okay so we we all know that uh, it is highly impossible to ma make a self uh, support towers because it is very costly so what we have to do there is always a connection between uh, uh, the uh, antenna height and the uh, and the antenna basement and also if you are going to use the guide wire for supporting the antenna towers then there is a uh, there is an uh, recommended values are there for example 130 percentage of the tower height will be the length and 110 percentage of the tower height will be the width of the uh, width of the rectangular so this is how we are using it and in some stringent cases we can use 80 percentage of the tower height also so if you use 80 feet or 70 feet here then you can easily calculate the uh, this uh, guide wire length using the pythagoras theorem okay so why we give so much importance to tower and and tower stability because if the tower keep on changing uh, along with the wind speed then the alignment will uh, the alignment will go off and it will result in a degradation of the microwave link or sometimes it may be uh, go for an unavailable seconds for uh, one or two seconds okay <clears throat> and we have seen one of the disadvantages of high gain antenna is it goes like a pencil beam the beam is very narrow beam width is very narrow 
so what will happen it is very tough to capture the um, capture the signal so alignment is bit tough and also once the alignment is done and the link is working if you kick the antenna slightly then it the, it will change the alignment then it will go to the it will result in an outage so that is an advantage of a high gain antenna so uh, before deciding the tower you should test the soil test you you will do that soil test and what is the wind loading and also you sh should check the regulatory options if there is any airport is there in, in nearby so considering all these factors you have to decide the height of the tower yes of course if you have a long uh, if you have a high height uh, or 100 meter under meter or 100 feet tower is there then you can go for a longer hops but normally in urban areas we don't require an, a high uh, a longer hop so we can go for a shorter tower heights in some cases, we use poles also. Okay, that's all about antenna things. So, we have learned about uh, antenna again, beam width and uh, polarization, antenna noise, and then finally tower. What is the relationship between the microwave antenna and the tower? So, thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day.